Hello and welcome in to the PHNX Suns podcast. I'm Lindsay, that's Espo. We're looking a little light here yeah, on the that, set today. That camera's too close to do the dance. We're that down was 50% of our squad, but don't worry. They will both be back tomorrow. Espo and I will be holding it down for you guys today. And we've got a lot of fun stuff in store for you. We do. You got a story you want to tell us up the top? I do. We got a Woj bomb today. It wasn't involving the Suns, but it was involving... A former son, uh, as Woj said, the 76ers are hiring Mike Longabardi as their head coach. The franchise is Delaware G League affiliate. Uh, Longabardi is a 20-year NBA assistant. He spent a handful of years here in Phoenix, same time I was with the Suns. And he was one of those guys I got kind of got to know uh, a little bit there. You didn't always get to know the assistant coaches. It kind of depended on if they were talkative or Some not. Some were just a little more <laughs> friendlier than others. Uh, Mike was one of those guys that uh, at first kind of seemed a little standoffish, but you, you know, you kind of got to know him. You talked to him and we found out we had a similar television show we loved to watch. We both loved to watch the show Suits. Okay. Very random. Uh, TV became a thing that uh, I bonded with a lot of people. I feel like there. TV is a great way to bond with people because it's such an easy topic that's like lightweight, but better yeah. than the weather. Yeah, like Lon Babby and I talk Mad Men all the time, mostly because he lived through that era. I just found it interesting. But uh, <laughs> but Longabardi and I kind of uh, found out we loved suits. So we talk about that every once in a while. And one time I'm pulling into the garage at the Footprint Center, then talking Stick Resort Arena. And I just see this guy running towards my car. I'm like, what in the actual hell like, is going is on? Because you, you never know. I mean, on that on that street, sometimes there's some sketchy individuals. And I'm waiting for the arm to go up. And I realize it's Mike Longabardi running towards my car and, and asked me to roll down the window. And I'm like, what is going on? Hey, it's a coach running at me. What did I do wrong is obviously <laughs> the first thing. Nope, he just wanted to talk about the previous night's suits oh, and God. happened to see me and thought, you know what, I'm going to run over there. He's so like, I don't want to wait. No, I got to talk now. Apparently waiting for practice was too much. So congratulations, Mike. Uh, good luck in uh, Delaware. I'm sorry it's in Delaware, but good luck with the uh, head coaching job of the G League. Uh, I believe they're the Blue Coats okay. in Delaware. So he will be there. Cool. Uh, Ben Franklin looking logo. So. All right. Yeah. Congratulations to him for sure. That's fun. I always enjoy, um, I think assistant coaches by design are more behind the scenes and I totally get that, mm -hmm. but I feel like there are some really awesome assistant coaches in the league that just don't get the storytelling, the shine, whatever it yeah. may be. Um, but there's a lot of really great ones out there. Some so. of my favorite are the second row assistants, the guys that you know, the, the development coaches and everything. You get to know them a little bit. Irv Roland's one of the best mm -hmm. I ever ever got to know. Uh, I, I loved those guys, too. So a lot of fun uh, with those assistant coaches. Over yeah, the years. absolutely. All right, Espo, it is Tuesday. And yes. normally that means Trade Machine Tuesday. However, Trade Machine Tuesday is feeling a little under the weather right now. I hope they recover well, but... Listen, I don't know when we'll see them back. They're just December. They're just feeling a little <laughs> a little sick, right? They got they got whatever I picked up in Vegas, but times three. So I don't know when we're gonna see Trade Machine Tuesday. So I think we should workshop a little bit here. We're gonna do a new Tuesday segment. It's gonna be something along the lines of Tuesday social media. So we'll workshop the name and chat. I really you guys hope Tuesday social in. media isn't the name. Here. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. We've got <laughs> trending Tuesday, or we could get a little bit weird with it. We could call it topical Tuesdays, and the graphic could be like a ointment cream. Yeah. No, X gonna give it to you in honor of the new Twitter name. We like. could do that. <laughs> We could do Toes Out Tuesday. Dear I'm just God, kidding. No. That'll never happen. No. Don't vote for that one because I'm going to veto it immediately. It, it is bad enough the Cardinals guys <laughs> rip off their sleeves and go tank Tuesday. We do not need uh, hey. Toes Out Tuesday here on the program. Be nice to my boys. Well, I've... <laughs> I've unfortunately seen Johnny with his <laughs> sleeves off, and I'm okay. Don't need to see it again, all right? Toes Out Tuesday would be hilarious, Ooh. but I'm not for it. Tipsy Tuesday from Hello. Tipsy Tuesday could work, potentially. I, I may or may not have had a wink before this show, so. <laughs> all I'm saying, ooh, Charles got one. Tantrum Tuesday. 
Low oh. key, I kind of like could that. Could be yes. super fun. I kind of like it that. It could be really fun. I got a lot of problems with you people, and you're going to hear about it. What would your first tantrum be? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to put some thought behind that for the very first one. No, like first oh. tantrum of the day right now. Oh, right Do now? It. I don't have a tantrum <gasps> right now. You know, Bullshit. I'm trying to think. It's got to be how stupid Elon Musk is. I mean, how, yeah, how I guess the, that would the, be. You cannot write what happened the, the like if you were to write a, a a parody of somebody paying 44 billion dollars for a social media company and all the stupid shit that, that he was going to do <laughs> that's it i mean he announces he's going to rename his company x doesn't even own the the copyright i f- meta owns a copyright so it's I stupid i feel like I, i'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt or credit or anything of that sort right but i kind of feel like it was on purpose because when threads popped off, Elon threatened to sue Zuckerberg because it's too close to his thing. So I feel like Elon did that intentionally to kind of poke the bear so that now Zuckerberg has to get involved. And they're basically just over here, like pushing each other's buttons to see who's going to actually blink first. You would think that, but not the case, because back when Elon uh, the PayPal merged with thing. PayPal, I, I know. he wanted to name it X. He paid, he owned X.com. They basically told him to screw all the way off. Like, he just has an obsession with this letter and wants to name a company. And then he says, oh, we're going to blow torch the Twitter sign off the side of the building and doesn't get permits to do it. Stupid. Anyways, <laughs> Stupid. You, you pulled you pulled the ripcord. There's your tantrum Tuesday. All right, there's your tantrum Tuesday. We're still workshopping the name, but it is going to be social media based. So we've got a lot of social things for you guys today. First up. We saw these on social media, a peek of what we think the Suns' new uniforms will look like. Now, I know we talked about this a little bit last week, but there was a season ticket holder event on Sunday that was super private, couldn't bring your phones into, like, real, real low-key as far as being able to have anything leak from it. However, I did see, I don't know if it was um son's uni is it son's uni tracker who who had tweeted Mm. out earlier that somebody had told him that they were pretty much this i can say sources very close to uh this okay uh i wouldn't say close but i've seen a photo that wasn't uh, you know that that isn't supposed to be someone snuck their phone in is what you're telling Uh, me yeah it it may have been somebody that did uh these are these are pretty spot on. Right? Okay. Wait, uh, can we see them one more time? Honestly, okay, so I'm glad that they finally put them on a player. Like they photoshopped these these renditions of what they think the jersey is going to look like and put it on a player because it looks so much better than just kind of like a flat lay photoshop. Oh yeah. You actually get a do. little bit more of the feel of it and I think I like these. I, I do. really do. I do too. I really, I'm not a big fan of the font that Suns is in, but that's a nitpicky thing, right? It just, I, I think overall the design, if you couldn't go with the original, this is about the best you're going to get. Uh, and I think these are the kind of things definitely when you see them on the players, when they're announced, we believe next early next week, mm-hmm. I think it's really going to pop. These are obviously still uh, guesstimations on it and, yeah. and trying to, showcase it but these are probably the most accurate on player things we've seen uh and i heard there might be a little bit more because i from what i'm hearing is like the shorts are that line based one that we saw we've been seeing since last summer it's for shorts seem like they're pretty much staying the same but maybe with a little bit more color yeah i think we'll i think is what sun's uni tracker was saying i think there might be multiple smaller things that are different than than what we're seeing in guesses but yeah, I mean, and they'll do some cool rollout. I'm sure there'll be some mm-hmm. pomp and circumstance about it. And we're we're working on getting somebody in here to tell us all the deets on it. But that's a, a sneak preview for you. So Jeremy said the purple one looks fire, not sold on the white one yet. I don't know about you, Jeremy, but for me, I don't think anything looks as good on a white uniform no. as it does on literally almost any other color uniform. Now, gray... I feel like might be less than white for me personally. Yeah. I just really dislike the color gray as far as it goes for like wearing like clothing items. I just don't <laughs> vibe with it at all. 
Um, but I just don't think that any design will actually look as good on a white uniform as it would a color full uniform or a black uniform. I think the out of basketball, I can't think of one white basketball uniform that I go, yeah, that's good. But yeah, the Yankees pinstripe and white is is a sharp look in sports, but for the majority, it never it never really but works. But the pinstripe helps break up the True. white, so I think True. that it's a little bit different there. Um, I don't know. I just kind of feel like we should just get rid of white jerseys in general. Well, the NBA like you you could have your instead of it being your main color, your home and away being white, you could just have your alternate. Like, why can't it just be instead of white and then whatever color that your team is? Why can't it be black and whatever color your team is? And then you can just have whatever else you want mixed in as an alternative. Well, if you look at what the NBA is doing, home team gets to pick whatever they wear. You don't have to wear the white. You can mix it. Uh, Which mix I'm it glad up. that they changed so, that. So I, I think the league is kind of leaning towards that. And if you look at what the Suns wore last year, there was a, a handful of times they had to wear white on the road because of what the what the opponent chose to wear. But they've moved away from wearing it half and half now. So Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still really excited. I hope. So the rumor is that we'll see these two jerseys officially next week sometime. I'm hearing August 1st. But when do we get to see the rest of them? Well, usually that happens sometime around media day would be my guess. Uh, That's yeah. so far away. Although, I, I don't, don't want to wait for the city edition for I, that long. Honestly, I don't know though, because you'd want to showcase one of these on media day, right? Traditionally, you'd show the city because it's the new one nobody's seen, but you're going to want to showcase the new primary uniforms. So maybe they release them sometime in September and uh, because they're not going to likely wear them for media day. So I don't know. I'd assume they'd want it sooner rather than later because, A, you the longer, sell more. That and way. the longer you wait to unveil it, the more likely it's going to leak by whatever yeah. sporting goods store that you have these jerseys being sold at. And there's already a pretty good guesstimation on those as well out there. What I'm interested in, and one thing we haven't heard anything on, is the court. Mm -hmm. How do you change the yeah. court to match these uniforms? Because I don't think you'll keep that the same. So that'll be interesting. And do we get a city edition court? Because you're I obviously I would like not... to think, yes, we've gotten a city edition court a couple years yeah. in a row now, right? We yeah. had the originative and we had the Valley, Valley Court, right? I'd imagine, and I'd imagine that Ishbia is going to want to go all out because really the imaginative court was reusing part of the Valley Court. You still had it did the, have a little you bit still had the, the mountain. It was the it was the the center logo yeah. that was mostly yeah. the biggest difference on that one. So I feel like you're gonna you're gonna see multiple different things kind of come out over. Over the next month or so, but we're gonna get a, those jerseys okay. here sooner rather. We're gonna than have later. four or five. You're gonna have because you got these two, white, then you got the city, the 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 black jerseys from last year. Oh yeah, those are, are coming there. back. That's so right. I think it's four. I think it's okay. those four. I don't think there is an additional no orange. Uh, yeah, I don't. I think that's it. You're gonna have the four. Which I'm makes kind sense. Of okay, with eliminating orange jerseys too. Oh, me too. You look like you freaking work at Home Depot it's when just, you wear orange jerseys. It's just jersey, not. But, but I think what we're gonna see is they're gonna wear the new icon and association edition, the white and the purple, a lot this year because they Probably. want people to buy those new jerseys. So. Well, and those jerseys could potentially, depending on how this year plays out, and depending on how long they have those as their icon and association jersey because sometimes those are like two years they're not as changed out as often or at least they weren't they might have changed recently i heard there's a lot of iterations coming up that okay the hardcore fan will like so oh. would not shock me if we get a black or this is pure speculation no insight but that we'll get a black version of of these uh, association or icon in the mix and and different things along the way wouldn't shock me if we get another classic uniform coming up eventually in the next few years as well so. okay well we'll keep an eye out for that but um this is seemingly close to what we're going to get but we'll yeah. know for certain hopefully next week and uh, be able to get some more information about that uh we are also getting more information about the sun's new tv deal which mm -hmm. we have heard about obviously this one is big for fans because it's much more easily accessible this team 
you can actually watch now. Um, <laughs> On which is, anything, any device you own. Which is really exciting because um, I believe they were saying like the percentages when it was on valleys was less than 40% of people in the mm. valley actually had access to Suns games. Um, so Matt Ishbia shared a little bit more details on some of the things we'll be seeing here. He said, this, this is going... This wasn't Matt Ishbia. This is oh, the... Oh, this is it? Oh, that's this right. Is You're right. Sorry. Of, uh, chief strategist of uh, the streaming company that they're using. Yes. Uh, which is Kisswees, right? Yes, correct. So their, their chief strategy officer, Mike... Shable, I'm going to guess that's how you pronounce his last I'd name, imagine so. said this is going to be well priced for the Arizona audience to be able to watch this. Our goal and the new Suns team owner, Matt Ishbia's goal is to make sure this is accessible for everybody. If you're a fan, this is going to be within reach. And this is in reference to streaming capabilities yes. as well, because that's been one of the biggest questions. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who are out of town who are still trying to figure out how they're going to be able to watch Suns games and benefit from a much more accessible product. Yeah, and this is going to be for the in-market people, too. You don't have to have cable. You don't have to have a streaming service. You can pay. My guess, and I haven't seen a specific price point. They don't get into it. It's probably like 15 20 bucks mm -hmm. a month. And or if they, the they did games. say you might could also do like a year long thing. Yes. Which you'll probably like most streaming sites. If you pay up front, you get a little bit of a discount. Yeah. I'll also say this. You could just uh, pay for a, a, I bought an adapter that turns your cable into an HDMI thing for like five bucks on Amazon. So I can get over the air well, as well. Yeah. So. You just need an antenna for yeah. this now. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're local. Yep. And uh, uh, I've also I talked with some of the people over at AZ Sports family sports and they're looking at deals with the direct tv streams and the youtube tv uh and you know all those the fubo uh and i think it'll be a lot easier to get on those platforms now that they have sons games right absolutely so this is a good sign they said that we will have all the information as including the price and where and how to purchase before um preseason begins for the Suns. Nice. so it'll be here sooner than we think obviously this like I'm not, I can't believe it's almost August. <laughs> it's kind of it's blowing my week, mind. Yeah. Literally next week is August. It seems like this summer just is flying by to an extent. But this is great news because um, I know especially a lot of our listeners and viewers are from out of town. And I know it's so hard for you guys to be able to watch Suns games. Um, and so making that as easy as possible for fans everywhere is always a win in my yeah, book. Definitely. Yeah. Of course, this does not change anything for like national games. No. So it's it's still the same as it's always been from a national perspective. If the Suns are playing on ESPN or TNT, if it's a blacked out game, like yeah. they're not going to be on these streaming channels and, or anything. An interesting thing, it'll be split between Channel 3 and their new AZ Family Sports channel. So it's... So that's already on YouTube TV and all the streamers. So they just need to get the secondary channel on there. Yeah. Well. There was a question that said, will it be just home games? No, home and away games yep. will all be on this. Any, all games that are not nationally televised games, well, uh, unless they're the dual, yeah, unless they're the dual yeah, stream. Yep. Yeah. So it's, I think usually it's about 10 games that if you're on national that are exclusive blacked out yeah uh and then there's the the dual stream so yeah you'll be able to watch anything you could watch on bally uh you're going to be able to watch uh, in this new package mm -hmm. so. and when we get the schedule it's always indicated on there which yep. games are nationally broadcast which, and which I, ones are exclusive i'm guessing we're about two weeks from that as well yeah that's probably coming out here yeah. pretty soon yeah all right uh, we're just a few months away from Suns basketball, which means our bet MGM competition will tip oh, off yes once again. I'm excited for that. I am not. In the meantime, though, <laughs> there are a lot of fun things happening on the bet MGM app. Uh, they've got a ton of baseball specific promotions going on. And all you have to do is log into the app, opt into the promotion and have a great time and win cool prizes and it's potentially easy. A bunch of money. If you have not signed up for BetMGM yet, make sure you do and make sure you use that bonus code PHNX. There's a few different offers depending on where you live, but for our Arizona audience, place your first bet offer and receive up to 1000 back in bonus bets 
if it loses with BetMGM. Again, make sure you use that bonus code PHNX when you sign up. You can check out the show notes for full details. And now you can listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-522-4700, Nevada. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Kansas, Nevada, New York, or Ontario. You know, Lindsay, I've seen you on the Circle K pump a mm-hmm. bunch. I've heard Saul's been on it. Derek Montilla, my mortal enemy, the former yeah. mayor of PHNX, is on there all the time. I've yet to see myself, and I have this dream. There's one thing that Circle K can make happen for me, that I hear my video on the other side of the pump, and I can scare the crap out of whoever's pumping gas by just popping my head around and asking if they indeed got their polar pop at Circle K. <laughs> that I just want that once, I mean, and my life be could funny. be complete. But you know what makes my life complete when I stop at Circle K? All the great deals that they have. And right now, you can get a buy four power aids for just five bucks. Mm-hmm. You need to quench that thirst out there in the hundred and God knows what heat that yep. you're dealing with. Circle K's got you covered with that. Uh, they also got buy two, get one free monster energy drinks. If you got a show to do uh, and you just don't have it at the moment, you can get that and then chug them right away. But make sure you're not missing out on any of this great stuff. Right now, text PHNX to 31310 to join their SMS subscriber club. And boy, do we have a deal for you. You're going to get buy one, get one free 32 ounce Polar Pop. So if you got somebody else in the car with you, uh, you're not selfish anymore. You're getting a free drink for them. Or if you don't, you get two drinks. How about that? So make sure to text that now and head over to circlek.com slash store locator to find a Circle K near you or just drive to the next corner. Yeah. I, that's the best part about Circle K is, is just the convenience. Yeah. They're literally everywhere, and I absolutely love them for that. I also love our friends over at Four Peaks for making such delightful beer and having such fantastic food yeah. at their brewery. In addition to the beer and the food, the vibes are immaculate. immaculate. They really just are. Four Peaks is such a great place to hang out, and I love that they always support the local teams. You know, they've got the Arizona Diamondbacks, Rattle on Red Ale, They've got the Suns Brew, like mm-hmm. it, like the little cans over here that are dope as hell. Right we love our head. friends over at Four Peaks, and we hope you guys will give them a shot as well if you have not. And if you haven't, like, are you living under a rock? Like, what are you doing? Or you can take a shot if you're at Four Peaks as well. <laughs> That's true. Uh, check out at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. You do have to be 21 years or older to drink Four Peaks, and we ask that you drink responsibly. So here's the Tantrum Tuesday portion of this segment. Uh I know you had your tantrum earlier, but this tantrum happened on social media. Emma, we've got a video here. Austin Rivers had some thoughts that he had to get off his chest. Regardless of how good of a player you are, man, the NBA is not, it's, it's a privilege. And... If you were a free agent, then you could choose where you were going to go. Right. That's the business. Yeah. But when you're not and you sign a deal, man, that's part of the business, bro. If you get traded somewhere, like, you got to go play, man. You know what I mean? Like, for sure. The whole, and this started with like James and Ben and all these guys doing this shit. It's bad for the league. This is why our CBA deal that we just signed, and I don't even want to get heavy into that. That thing is, don't even get me started right. on that deal that we got going because it's top heavy. That's why you're seeing all these teams right now with, you either make fifty million or two. It, yeah. It's the most lopsided contract teams. I, I mean, it, it's a joke, bro. I can't tell you how many mid-level guys are signing for vet minimum around the NBA. It's it's laughable. Don't get me started, Austin Rivers. You get traded to a place you're supposed to play there. Do you not remember 2019? You got traded to a little team called the Phoenix Suns, and then you told this to the Arizona Republic. Do we have that graphic, yeah. Emma? Let's talk about this. You're a hypocrite. I, quote, I knew I wouldn't come here, Rivers said. I wouldn't come here, and they knew that. Really? You crybaby? 
You're sitting here ranting and raving about Dame Lillard and James Harden and God knows who asking for trades or trying to dictate where they go. And you got traded and told them, nah, I'm good. I'm not playing there because you were 26 and you had made the playoffs before. What the hell is wrong with you? All right. If you're going to sit here and complain and complain about the deal because all of a sudden guys like you can't get a final payday for being average at best when other guys who are talented are getting top dollar, that's on you, bro. And don't come at us with that weak ass shit about the fact that, oh, if you get traded, you got to play because you didn't do it. Yeah, I mean, like Kyle B in the chat said, the receipts don't lie. He also said during that 2019 blip in the radar, I suppose, of him being a Phoenix Sun, he said they understood where I was at. I'm not old. I'm only 26. But where I've been, I've been on playoff teams the past five years. Like, bro, if you would have come here, you could have had a lot of fun. Like that was literally the turning around point of where things started to get a little bit better for the Phoenix Suns. But beyond that, this has been happening for as long as I can remember being alive and understanding the NBA. Players have forced their way out of and to different cities. It may be more commonplace now, sure, but from top to bottom, again, as long as I've been alive, they've been doing it. Look, so this is not new news. This is not, you can't blame the new CBA on that. No, and hey, Austin Rivers, welcome to the real world where the, the haves have a lot and the have-nots don't. All right. The NBA is now following economics like it is everywhere else in the world. And that's that's the thing that kills me here, because now this deal is actually better in theory for players because you have 51 percent of all basketball related income, where before they were getting between 49 and 50 percent. So now they're making an additional two hundred and fifty five million dollars in basketball related income. Uh, that the teams make. So the players actually get more money. The problem here is the structure of it. The NBA owners wanted a hard cap, so nobody was getting going over, uh, over that. They got the second apron instead. So that just means less teams are going to be willing to spend more money on middling guys, and guys like the Sun signed are going to be willing to take a little less to play for a winner. That's just the math of it, Austin. I'm sorry. Well, and the thing is, too, is that, like, this, there, there are always going to be unintended consequences to every single change that is made mm -hmm. in life in general, right? But you can still go elsewhere and make more money. Like, we talked about Eric Gordon. He was offered more money. He mm -hmm. chose to play for the Suns because the Suns, to him, was his best opportunity to win a ring. All this does now from that end of things, or at least maybe not all this does, but it gives you, you still have to weigh the pros and cons. You can go make money elsewhere playing for a team that is not in contention, or you can take less money and play for a team that potentially could get you that ring. You just have to weigh the pros and cons of both situations, both sides, and make the right decision for yourself. But like... I don't know, to your point, being able to get more of that revenue in players' pockets, like one, one and a half percent doesn't seem like a lot, but that's $250 million. Mm -hmm. And that will continue to go up through the life of this CBA. Well, and that means the players now make more of the basketball-related income than the owners do. And look, Austin obviously isn't all that great at decision-making because he chose not to be with the Suns. Guess where he's never been? The NBA Finals. The year after he would have been traded here, they went to the NBA Finals. So good on you there. But he's also complaining about the idea of Big Three's top-heavy teams. You know who was uh, one of the first involved in one of those uh, Big Threes that was made by His trade? Dad. His dad in Boston. So, Austin, uh, good luck in Minnesota. Good luck uh, with your podcasting career. Just come correct next time, because when we have receipts, we're going to show them to you. Also, also, if you didn't like it, you had every opportunity to get involved in it. Mm -hmm. You had every opportunity to have the conversations with the, the players who all had to collectively, some in some capacity, agree to this. Like, if it was that big of a deal to you, I hope that you, at least I'm just speculating here, of course, but I hope that you were this passionate behind the scenes before this was agreed upon.
Yeah, I mean, he wasn't a player rep last year, and I don't know how the process is. And honestly, I didn't go back and look every year he's been in the league if he has been a player rep. But two of the guys that signed with the Suns, Metu and, and Akogi, were player reps. They were two guys that accepted minimums to come here and play. Like Bradley be Beal was on it mm-hmm. last year as well, too. And when you go in and you look at all the players that are in some capacity involved, it's a mixed bag of players. You have players who are making really good money. You have players who are more like a vet minimum style player. Like it it covers a wide range of earnings represented from NBA players. Mm -hmm. So you had a good, good amount of, I don't know, just different perspective throughout this with as far as the player reps go. But I don't know. I just, when I saw this and then of course, I saw it on Sun's Twitter. So everyone was like, oh, this you with all the screenshots yeah. of like you refusing to come play here, you forcing your way out of Phoenix or whatever you want to call it. It's like you can't be mad at the things that you participate in to an extent, yeah. like it, especially when it's a decision to participate. It, this mm-hmm. is not a necessity to participate in refusing to show up to play. Well, it wasn't the only time he got cut. His dad cut him, too. So. Uh, I like Musab. Yeah, y'all acting like Austin insulted your mother. No, he insulted my sports team, and that sometimes that's just as bad. All right. One A, one B. I mean, depending I didn't on say the worse. day. Depending I said on the day. Sometimes just as bad. One can be A, or Ma- one can be B. Mama Espo ain't gonna get mad at me for that. I said almost, I almost as bad. Also, Musab, we're trying out Tantrum Tuesday. That's what we're we're <laughs> trying it out. That's the segment. So he threw a tantrum. Now we get to throw a tantrum. I think it's only fair. Yeah. Eli, thank you for the shout out. Uh, I'm not vain enough to read it all, but thank you. So, All right. We did get a super chat from Leo. Leo, thank you for your super chat. Said, which former Phoenix son you think would fit best with the current roster? I'll start. Ricky Rubio. I mean, I wouldn't mind having Ricky back on the squad. Former son that would fit best. <laughs> on the sh- well, honestly, Sean Marion would be an uh, unbelievable... I mean, yeah. If you're going Fit, that far back. I think you could say any of those guys. But, I mean, if we're, we're looking, Jason Kidd was an unbelievable defender and an amazing passer. If he was on this roster, I think, I, you know, and he never would have been, but as that six-man backup role, this team would be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Hall of Fame point guard, but, you know, so. Um, this is just for the one person in our chat who over the last couple of weeks has always come in and just screamed his name. Kelly Oubre Jr., Yes. Just he, kidding. I don't think he actually fits so much on this team, but it would be fun. He fits nicely. He fits on, the vibes. Uh, never mind. I'll leave Kelly alone. <laughs> yes, leave Kelly alone. <laughs> leave Honestly, Kelly though, alone. Ricky Rubio off the bench would be, I would not be mad at that. No, but you're never making a trade with Cleveland because Ishby and Dan Gilbert basically hate each other. Yeah, so, so Jay says good. Earl Clark. Uh, I table. think you should put down the uh, four peaks here. Will Captains and Mikel Bridges. Honestly, Mikel Bridges. I would love to have him back. Nah, he's And soft. Cam Jones. Just kidding. Uh, which, by the way, if you haven't listened to the Mikel Bridges podcast with Paul George, it was actually pretty good. It was him talking about uh, <laughs> saying goodbye to people like, oh, I'll, be, I'll see you in a few days. And his ass got shipped out. Yeah, it was kind of Well, funny. just a little bit more perspective, a little bit more insight to how everything kind of went yeah. down. Um, but if, if you miss Mikel, go leave, give it a listen. Uh also, make sure you guys check out our friends over at Burrito Express. They stopped by yesterday and dropped off some burritos. Mm, and burrito. here's the thing. Espo and I are kind of on the same page oh. here. And everyone else here at PHNX is completely against us when it comes to this. Now, you took it a step further than what I'm willing to go. But yesterday after the show, I grabbed my burrito out of the fridge. So it was cold, right? It was the breakfast supreme burrito, which has like bacon and ham and stuff in it. And when I got home, I didn't feel like heating it up. So I ate it cold. And low key, it was really delightful. You, however, ate a bean and cheese cold burrito. And I don't know if I can do a cold bean and cheese burrito. You know what the benefit of a cold bean and cheese burrito is? What? The beans don't come spilling out of it like it does when it's hot. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. It's it's more convenient. Same test, taste, more convenient. But I think the difference with the breakfast burrito is that there's nothing in it that felt weird eating cold. Okay. Behind the scenes here... Real quick, 
Uh, we've got one of our friends from DNVR, and I got a Nuggets lover telling me something's gross. And the fact that you back that team and you live in Denver uh, speaks enough about your opinion, sir. Continue, Lindsay. All I'm going to say is that if you can eat a cold burrito and enjoy it, I think that has a lot of a lot to say about the quality of the burrito in the first place. Yep. Because I don't think you can eat every single burrito that you get from just anywhere cold and still enjoy it. But Burrito Express has bomb burritos, and I think that's why it works. So make sure you grab a burrito from our friends over at Burrito Express, and also give them a follow on Twitter at Burrito EXP. Yeah, look, the people have spoken. Eli's with me. So says Jay, says excellent bean point, Espo, which is a phrase I never thought I'd (laughs) utter, but I'll take it. You know, it's all good. But you know what's really good, Lindsay? What? This polo from Pins and Aces. I didn't know I was going to have a Pins and Aces read today. Didn't. Put this on this morning because I love this polo. One of my favorite polos it's a super I polo. own with the Phoenix, and we got it at our golf tournament. There's nothing more comfortable than a Pins and Aces polo. Their hats are great, and you got to get to be a part of this uh, this phenomenon that I call it uh, with the Pins and Aces. It's the official golf apparel partner of PHNX and All City. All our cities across this brand, we rep Pins and Aces. Uh, and, you know, it's it's amazing what you can get over at their website. Beanies. They got uh, beanies, They y'all. do have beanies. They got beanies, hats, apparel, uh, all sorts of things for, for your golfing needs and for just looking nice. And these are those kind of shirts that uh, help you not sweat as much. Yeah, yeah. It, that is the best part. It's so, got that good material. Yes, it is. So head to pinsandaces.com. Use that promo code PHNX to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. It's just that easy at <laughs> pinsandaces.com. Speaking of promo code PHNX, you can also use that promo code for our friends over at Shady Rays. Exclusively for you guys, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to shadyrays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. You can try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Shady Rays came in so clutch when we were in Las Vegas. I just wore them like 24-7. It didn't matter if we were inside. It didn't matter if it was 2 a.m. The Shady Rays stayed on 24-7. They hid those Vegas eyes, which are not good <laughs> exactly. in any way. Exactly. Shout out to Shady Rays. They also have a location in Scottsdale at uh, the Carolyn's Common. So if you want to try them on, you can check them out over there. All right. So oh, in you, honor. Hold on. You know who's throwing shade? Who's throwing Jay shade? Jay in the chat. Can Jay, you throwing up, shade? Can we go up to Jay? Not at us. But Ooh. Jay says... If I put my, my if I put up with my cold hearted ex, I can put up with a cold burrito. Jay, I got a couch in this office. If you need to come and and sit down if on that bad boy safe place. and talk, therapist Espo is here for oh, you, my no. friend. I don't think you should do that one. I Jay. don't charge either. I just will give you bad advice for free. So. <laughs> oh boy! All right. In honor of Trending Tuesday. Topical Tuesday, social media in general, (laughs) topical, toes out Tuesday, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be filling out our top eight. Yeah. For the rollback to MySpace. Yeah. For those of you that don't know and are too young, like our producer, Emma, MySpace was a social media platform before Facebook, even where uh, you could post and you had a wall and they had something that really could just hurt people's feelings. It was called a top eight where you ranked your friends yep. one through eight mm-hmm. and could really start some wars. If somebody pissed you off, you took them out. It was pretty brutal back there in the days on these streets. So, Like, could you imagine how many feelings today in this this day and age of social media like Friendships would be ruined by being removed from one, two, or three of the top eight. When you could see uh, people's best friends list on Snapchat, it started fights. I could not imagine ranking your friends. Oh. You liter- And, like, people would literally go in and, like, if you got into a fight, take you off yeah. for, like, three days and until you made up. And then like, you'd put it back in. And everyone would know, though, if you were in a relationship because if you broke up with your boo thing... Removed from the top eight wow. or top whatever it, it was, was pretty at that point throw. in time. Tom, Tom, who was the face of it, was a ruthless bastard. Social media started out hot. Yeah, it that's did. That's for sure. So. All right. So we're not going to rank our friends today. 
We're going to keep it a you little sure? more. What? Can we're we gonna, rank co nice. <laughs> I know we only have three, three each. But, Dude, if yeah. we had a top eight, mine would change daily. I would never be in it. Every who's, who's single your top eight today? every single day. <laughs> who's it today? Well, Espo, he's the only one who showed up. So he's first. I made it. <laughs> Woohoo! But last week, whatever day we fought, the two days we fought, you would have been removed from the top eight for sure. <laughs> Gerald on the Bowl Bowl episode would have been removed from the top eight for sure. Puns do not make her top eight. All right. All right. So instead of ranking our friends, today we are going to rank our favorite things about basketball. We're going to do a top eight of our favorite things about basketball. I think, should we ask what you want to start with number eight and go backwards? Yes, and we can alternate. Uh, okay. Would you like to start? No, you start. Okay, number eight for me is announcers, uh, you know, catchphrases or calls. Oh, that's a good I love, one. I love a good announcer getting excited about something in a basketball game. It can take a play from great to another level. Okay, I like that one. Um, I have the stories. This one was a tough one because I went I went back and forth between um, a couple here. So my last one was going to either be a nutmeg, a rip through, but I ultimately went with a one that was a little bit more gentle and sweet. It's the stories of the athletes and all they do in addition to playing basketball. She's stuck with the nutmeg. I know, but I'm going to go with the athlete stories in addition to what they do on the basketball court. Okay. So. Technically, it's not basketball. It is. But it is. It's about the player. I think it counts. Uh, number seven, inflatable mascots. If you don't like them, <laughs> you suck. All right? They're better than, in most cases, the real mascots. They're, they're funnier. They can eat human beings. You ever see the one? I yes. think it was. Uh, yeah. I think I don't know if it was Memphis or whatever. The little one ate a person and then spit out a skeleton. Great entertainment. It was amazing. Plus, Inflatable masks. When they accidentally fall over. Oh, it's the I took my daughter so to her first Mercury game over. earlier this season. <laughs> they introduced the Mercury's first inflatable mascots. Okay. The little one fell over and oh, its no. eyes popped off. Oh, no. it, went, it wasn't supposed to happen, but my daughter talks about it. To I this love day. that. Inflatable mascots, number seven. All right. Number seven for me is the memes. The amount of memes that have come from NBA, Brian Windhorse, you got even throwback, the Swaggy P question mark one. Ah. Fantastic. LeBron James, I can't believe this is my life. We get so many fantastic memes I, from, from the NBA. I'll go basketball. back even further. Alonzo Mourning on the heat bench with the... Oh, yeah. That was fantastic. You can use that on so many things. Jimmy Butler, um, the bubble one. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. There's so Just many, a, the, so many memes. I, Brian Windhorse, better one with the why would they do that or him on the rolling chair where he was trying to get on set and he rolled in the shot and rolled right out. That one's hilarious too. So I don't know that I've seen that one. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna vote yeah. for the why would they yeah. do that one because I haven't seen that. And Jay mentioned it. The Bradley Beal meme. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's become more fun since he got traded. Yeah, totally. Here, so. uh, number six for me. Another one. If you don't like it, I'm not sure you have a heart. T-shirt Gatling gun. Okay. Like, they took the free T-shirt, and they said, how can we make this even more delightful and entertaining? And they handed a mascot a Gatling gun for T-shirts. 30-plus T-shirts coming out all in a row as you turn in a circle. Your list is so funny. Oh, my God. Me. I so badly wanted to fire the T-shirt Gatling gun when I worked there. I mean, it would I, be fun. I wanted to set cardboard cutouts up in the uh, in the stands. And see how many of, you could knock out. Of sons hated people and just Gatling gun T-shirt and see how That's many I could hit in a three-second span. T-shirt guns are a blast. I'm not going to lie. They're... It's uh, they're super yes. fun. Okay, five for me is just the speed of the game in general. Like I love that basketball is a fast paced, high energy, exciting, always big moments, highlights within the game on just like a regular basis. Yeah. Like I think that's why basketball is my favorite sport is because there's not a ton of just like lulls no. within the game, and I appreciate that very much about it. I do too. Uh, it's. I mean, look, baseball looked around and went, what, is what can we take from basketball to make this more interesting? Oh, we'll do our version of a shot clock. Like, could you imagine basketball without a shot clock? No. I can because I've read some of the stuff about when they no. didn't have a shot clock, and it was like 15-13 was what games were. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, give me the speed of basketball Absolutely. for sure. Uh, number five for me, 
chase down blocks. Ooh. There is nothing more oh. entertaining defensively than a guy that thinks he's about to get an easy dunk or layup, and then somebody comes up behind him and says, "Uh, uh-uh, ain't happening." Uh, it's 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 the most disrespectful, yes. uh, legal play in basketball, and I love it. Okay, we're close but opposite. My number four is the whole sequence of a steal and breakaway dunk. Bonus points if you do something disrespectful when you dunk that ball. Well, so you really would love the steal, the guy going for dunk, and then a disrespectful chase down block. Right. The uh, the fact that <laughs> like that I totally whiffed by not having a, some sort of a block on my list. Mm-hmm. Totally whiffed there. Um, when you mentioned it, the, I immediately was like, yeah, I screwed up. But still, I do really appreciate this. It's like, I hate it when it happens against you. Like if somebody gets a breakaway and the little between the legs, so disrespectful. But if we do it, like that was fun though. I think I just figured out how to fix the dunk contest. How? One defender is allowed. So you could try whatever dunk you want, but there is one guy trying to stop you from completing said dunk. I. Mm, at least for one of the dunks, I think I could get on board with this. Because you have to do what three? Yeah. I think for one of them, they should be it should be a I, contested dunk. I think I just fixed the dunk contest, ladies and gentlemen. Did I, you get a Rico well, and then you then you get an additional all star participant by shot blocking. Like like you still yeah exactly. I, I mean, it only lasts one year until one of these guys gets brutally injured in this. But I'm all for this because if you're getting poster dunks in the dunk contest now, oh, I kind of love this. Yeah. Esco. you're welcome, NBA. I don't know if the players would actually agree to it, but I like it. Oh, it would be a blast. I there's there's nothing like that. Dude, give me that. All I'm right. done with my list. Just put that as the other five, <laughs> and we're good to go. Uh, no, uh, number four. We did four. You're at three. No, we did five. Now we're at four. Now we're at... Did I not have any as many? You know, you... Lindsay's got to count, ladies and gentlemen. No, we're at four. We're at three. We're at four because I did chase down blocks. Bro, you count yours. Did you... Do you have nine? Do I have an extra? No. (laughs) Are you sure? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I can... I numbered it. I know I don't. Uh, My next one is intro video slash starting lineups. There's not... I'm on number three. There's great... There, there's a great moment. Did you skip one, Lindsay? Just keep reading through your list. Uh, the, when you're even Shit, when you're a kid or you're an adult, <laughs> the the intro video, the starting lineup, the voice, the big booming voice, and now the starting lineup for your Phoenix Suns. There's nothing like that. I love that moment and would look forward to it, especially the first time. Every year when I was working for a team, nothing like seeing the video and hearing that voice for the first time. Which number did you skip, Lindsay? I skipped number six. Okay. What's what's Whoops. your number four slash six? Um, basketball culture. And this is just like an all-encompassing, like the fashion, the player empowerment, the streetwear, street basketball type of, like all the vibes, all the culture around um, the NBA is one of my favorite things about basketball. So you're sure. the anti-Austin Rivers is what you're saying? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Three. The f- uh, Just in general. I okay. just feel like basketball culture as a whole That's is fair. top notch. Uh, I think hometown crowds. Okay. That's and this good. isn't pandering. This is in, in any city. I think you feel like your crowd and being around people that love a team like you love. Mm-hmm. is uh is fun that's uh, i'll never forget the feeling in game two of uh, of the 2021 finals where the suns get there i we go in that building most of us hadn't been in the building since COVID, and it was like i'm home yeah i'm with my people mm-hmm. this is fantastic and so i'll say hometown crowd okay my number three is that where we're at yes um i don't know where you're at that's where i'm at <laughs> Any sort of like a big bucket celebration, right? Like we had the Mikel Bridges, like three thing, Devin and him falling on the floor and laying there all the time. Like any sort of like you see it with Steph Curry, the Splash Brothers, like there's so many different ones and they all hit a little different, but they're so much fun. Sam Cassell, big ball dance. That was always fun back in the day. Uh, Two, it's simple. It's dunks. 
Okay. Dunks of any variety. Yes. I love dunks big and dunks small on guys and in the open court. However it happens, I love me some dunks. All right. <laughs> uh, my number two is the drama. Of course, <laughs> you are never like light when it comes to any sort of drama around the NBA. Except when you're creeping on August and you're <laughs> I guarantee you there will be drama somewhere Probably. in the NBA in August as Probably. well. Probably. You're never short on storylines, that's for this sure. This is true. My number one, it's four point plays slash end ones with a with a really difficult basket. Okay. Make. Though there is something inherently just you get that kind of disrespect because you're hitting that shot when the guy's fouling you. A lot of times the guy's getting knocked over as mm -hmm. he does it, and he's sitting there staring at the guy. And then he gets to the free throw line and gets a free point most of the time out of the deal as well. I yeah, that. no, that's a good one. Number one for me is dunks. Same, same as your number two. Yeah. Any variety, like they're all, except for like little bunnies, of course, but like a, a substantial dunk here. There is nothing more exciting, and I feel like it invigorates the crowd as well, gets everybody hype. It's one of those things that leads to a big bucket celebration. I just really enjoy dunks. Yeah, Ricardo, nice to see you checking in from Puerto Rico. Thanks. Hi. I think that's our uh, top eight. That is our I, top eight. I don't think we hurt anybody with this top eight. I but, don't think so. But next time, it's top eight ph and x employees that's what we're going with oh we're gonna hurt lots of feelings sean's my number one right now sean's not even on he, my list he's in my peripheral vision he's laughed at a few things so <laughs> my ego ranks him number one right now <laughs> emma number two for the same reason so emma would be in my top four for sure <laughs> that's for sure really emma just gasps she's like really <laughs> oh emma <laughs> oh no. H Hello says Lindsay hates bunnies. So evil. I mean, <laughs> they're they're thinking uh, the animal. There, I know. So. I'm just joking. Zach <laughs> said y'all missed an obvious NBA offseason slash trade Ooh. deadline. Here's my thing, Zach. That I feel like that also falls under the drama. Like to me, half of NBA offseason trade stuff That's is fair. dramatic. That's fair. I think like the free agent signings, maybe not so much, but like big trades. You're going to tell me that's not drama. No. Kevin Durant forcing his way to Phoenix. Bradley Beal activating his, his no to trade Phoenix. clause to Phoenix. <laughs> drama. Look. Drama. I, the reason I don't think I included trade deadlines is because when you've worked for a team, those can be traumatizing they are experiences. a little bit traumatizing. It is chaos. I think I've told this story, but why the hell not tell another one? And we got a few minutes. Day, uh, I'll tell this one. The Markeith Morris, the day he got traded, I think it was 2015, we're in a meeting on how to spin it that he's not getting traded. Oh, God. And then oh, I'm getting fed. This is what we're going to have to say. This is how we position it. He's part of the future. Uh, Earl Watson is really, really tapped into him, and we think he's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, all our phones start going off at, I, I think it was like 12.59. I think the deadline was at 1. And we look down and Woj is like, uh, the Suns trade Markeith Morris for a first-round pick, I believe it was to Washington. And we're all like, so this last hour of our life doesn't matter? We don't have to kiss his ass anymore? No, all right, everybody go take Markeith Morris off anything that he happened to be on. Yeah. Like, that kind of stuff. There were so many moments like that, just total stupidity chaos around mm -hmm. around the deadline. And so. when somebody gets traded, too, they're so particular about making sure, like you said, take them off of anything, literally anything well, and everything. You the just entire, scrub, scrub the website, yeah. scrub social, re-edit all the edits you just spent all that time doing. Like, yeah. it's so outrageous. Yeah. Got a ticket graphic you have with to them make in it there, take them out. Make it feel as if they were never a part of your franchise ever before in their lives. But didn't you ever do that with exes? Like after you break up, didn't you go through social? Like I get rid of those pictures. I don't ever see that shit again. Or even further back, you'd cut them out of said picture. If you looked really <laughs> good, you just cut that bad boy in half. Like uh, I can say, honestly, I never did that, but I have scrubbed things from social media yeah. for sure. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, Thank you guys for hanging out with us for an hour on this Tuesday afternoon. We had a blast. Hopefully you did too. We will be 
hopefully all four of us back tomorrow. No guarantee. No guarantee, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we'll at least have three of us back tomorrow no, at the minimum. No but it should be four of us. So plan to come hang out with uh, with us again tomorrow at 3 p.m. Until then, give the show a follow on Twitter at phnx underscore sons. You can also follow me at Lindsay Smith AZ. And of course, you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. Cry me a rivers. Ahoy, ahoy. Hey yo, my lifestyle is retro. Tell the Phoenix Metro. Megas in control and he ain't never gonna let go. PHNX though. Lindsay Gerald Espo. Saw past the ball. We hit it.